What's up everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today, once again, I am going to be talking about Cyberfrog, but not the comic in particular. I already did my review of Cyberfrog, but this video is about my review of Cyberfrog, because apparently people are losing their fucking minds and it's driving me crazy because all of these people decided to come out of the woodwork and accuse me of not being qualified enough to give a review of a comic book saying that i don't know anything about comics that i need to stick to star wars that i need to stick to things that i know all right uh well that that just shows the lack of research that those people have done and then other people have come out saying oh yeah she doesn't understand that this is the first issue of the comic and this is comic books come out in series and that you're not going to get the entire story in the first comic no fucking shit sherlock i know that i know i said it in the video i also said in the video if you actually paid attention and watched it that because of the fact that this isn't like a normal comic book. Comic books usually come out, you know, a new one comes out every month. That's usually the way that they do it in comic books. The comic books that I read, they came out every single month. And then if you do, you know, now modern day webtoons where they come out every week or every other week, and those are a lot shorter than, you know, regular standard comics, but we're going to stick to regular standard comics right now. So comics come out one, a new one every month. Now, Unlike regularly the mainstream comic book industry, because Ethan was from the mainstream comic book industry, he always says that in his videos, 26 year veteran of the comic book industry. Now, he does stuff on Indiegogo. That's one of the things about Comic Skate is that they do the whole Indiegogo campaign and, you know, they get crowdfunding so that way they can release their comic. They do it all themselves. Sometimes they go through people, you know, to do the printing and all of that and, you know, the shipping. But pretty much it's all them doing like a one man type of job kind of thing. That's what Ethan does. He's, you know, sending them out to everyone himself. That That's what he's doing. Okay. Now, because of this, he's not going to be able to do this every single month. This comic book took a year after I ordered it to come in. And that's why I say in the video, because I'm going to have to wait a year for the next one, I wish there would have been more. That is what I said, that it was just exposition introducing the character, and I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted more. That was my biggest critique, and I said it's like getting blue balls because I waited a year for this comic, and, you know, it's one of those things, and yes, this is going to be adult terminology. It's where you've been teased for a year, and then right when you think you're going to get it in, all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, no, we're done. We're done. It's a cliffhanger. You gotta wait another year. That's the definition of freaking blue balls. That's why I said that about this comic. I wanted more because I'm going to have to wait. I wish it would have been longer. For, you know, in this whole comic skate thing, I don't know. This is the first comic skate book I've ever received because I missed out on all the first campaigns because I didn't know about comic skate. I didn't know about any of that stuff because, you know, I was paying attention to Star Wars. I was graduating from college, which that's going to come into effect in this video with all those people that said I was not qualified to talk about this. I didn't know the comic skate was going on. I knew there was something fishy going on with the comic book industry and that it was all getting woke, but my mind wasn't focused on that because guess what? I was in college. I went to college to become a concept artist like Ralph McQuarrie so I could work on Star Wars. My first semester of college, George Lucas sold Disney or sold Star Wars over to Disney and my heart dropped because I was like, this is why I came to college. So that way I could go work at Lucasfilm and work for George Lucas. And now I lost that opportunity. So I had to make a big career, you know, aspiration change first semester of college. So my mind wasn't focused on becoming a comic book artist. I never thought I would ever have the pleasure of meeting someone like Ethan Van Skyver, of being friends with somebody like John Malin. That was never, ever something that I ever thought would happen. Maybe it was some people that I would run into cons, but Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be holding this in my hand because, you know, I spoke to Ethan personally and he sent me it. And that's another thing. Ethan was the one that sent me the comic. So all the people that are throwing a hissy fit over the fact that I got my comic book and I was one of the first people to make a review, well, guess what? All the other people that got their comic books before me, because I was not the first one to receive it, they are more than capable of turning on a camera and talking and giving a review. Just because I was one of the first ones to get it doesn't mean that, you know, the rest of the world that's bad on Ethan that's bad on me you want the book okay great 
order it, and then, you know, do a review. Turn your camera on, start talking. I'm not the one that dictates who makes a video first. So for people that are complaining about that, oh, Ethan should have sent it to this person, Ethan should have sent it to this person, Ethan shouldn't have sent it to this person, I guarantee it, nobody was annoying Ethan the way that I did, because, again, like I said, I was getting teased for a year about this damn comic book, which, like I said in the video, wasn't even something, this isn't even the genre I'm interested in. I, like I use the comparison of the Ninja Turtles. I like superhero comics. I like things about, you know, mutant stuff. But when I think about mutants, I think about X-Men. I like the X-Men. Ninja Turtles were never, not, never something I was interested in. This would not typically be something I would be interested in. But I love Ethan's art. And the way that Ethan pitched this book, I was like, wow, I want to get invested in it. I want to know about it. And for those of you Again, that, you know, didn't take the time to watch the video. The first ten minutes of it is me actually critiquing the comic, the quality of it, and the artwork. And the way that Ethan does the page sets up. So everyone that's freaking out because of my end critique about me saying that, oh, it's just the exposition. Again, it's because if I'm going to wait a year for the second one, I want a little bit more to go off of. This book gave me, you know, the definition of blue balls because now I'm going to have to wait another year for to find out what else is going to happen. Of course, I can always badger Ethan and get him to tell me what's going to happen. Well, he probably won't. Maybe if I badger him enough. But still, it's one of those things. that It's just my opinion, so don't go freaking out about it. And then, of course, everyone... Anna doesn't know anything about comic books. Anna just needs to stick to Star Wars. Anna's not a comic book fan. All right, well, let's go through this, shall we? I use my camera angle's not very good. This... This isn't even all my comics, guys. These are just the ones that I'm able to pull out. You know what comic books I started off with? Do you know what it is? Because I talked about it in videos. I've talked about it many times. My mother owned an antique store when I was a child, and I would always hang out in the booth, the cool booth, I would say, that had a bunch of comics in it. And the one that I was able to get out of this, you know, this paper thing was a Dr. Fate comic book. I am... 100 percent you know dc 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 i was never really interested in marvel uh, i shouldn't say that i liked marvel but i always prefer dc more i like the dc characters and i love the dr fate comics that was the very first comic i ever read then i would get all of these star wars comics that came with the action figures and like i've said many times before my mother thought i was weird enough already she didn't want her little girl that she wanted to grow up to be this perfect blonde cheerleader which was not gonna happen she didn't want me reading comics she thought i was weird enough that i was quoting every single line from star wars and star trek she that was weird. She didn't want me going and reading comics. She wanted me to read girly books. So I didn't get access to comic books until I was older when I was in or when I was in high school really and then when I was in college. And guess what? I went to college. Yeah, go figure. I went to college and I have a degree in art. I got an A in every single comic book class I took. You don't believe me? I have my diploma. I'm not one of those stingy, you know, stuck up people that has my every single diploma I have up on my wall. No. No, I act I just keep it look you can see that there's dust on it I went to art school so that way I could become a, you know a visual development artist I wanted to be a concept artist and I still do concept artwork you see you see I'm probably I'm not qualified to give a review on comic books who the fuck is the only one here that's given a review that has a degree oh yeah that's right probably not that many people so you want to say that I'm not qualified to give a review on a comic book that is about a frog that has cybernetic, you know, modifications to it from an outer space alien? You don't like the fact that I fold the paper like this, even though that is where the staples are, even though I have another comic book coming that's chromium that I'm going to keep in pristine condition. You don't like the fact that I got this comic that I reviewed at first, that I'm not qualified to review this comic. You didn't like the critique, the fact that I spent 10 fucking minutes going over the art, that I was explaining how every single page is a fucking work of art, and Ethan is amazing at visual storytelling. You didn't like that? You didn't think I was qualified enough? Then guess what? You can go fuck yourself. Don't watch my videos. You want to go and make other videos complaining about me talking about comic books and you want to say I'm not a comic book fan oh well Anna's never given a review about comics do you see me going and talking about every single thing that I'm interested in do you see me going and making videos about you know my dog no do you see me going and making videos about Star Trek no do you see me going and make videos about the X-Files do you see me I, I do do art videos I don't do as very many of them but I do some I do them sometimes 
But, you know what? My channel was built on me reviewing Star Wars and me ranting. And, you know, people do like my review of stuff. Guess what? You People have gone, well, she's never reviewed a comic book before. Uh, did you not see my review of Batman Dam, the one where it shows his fucking penis? I did a review on that. You can go watch it. I have that comic book. I did buy it. And guess what? I do read comic books. I have a whole stack right there, but now I've gotten more into digital comics because, uh... You know, some of the comic book artists that I like, they are over in Italy. I like the way that all of the artists over there are getting trained. You know, they're all digital now. And so a lot of them just do digital comics because it's, I get for some reason, they don't ship to the U.S. very well. So a lot of the comics that I do read currently are Italian comics that get translated to English. And I have to wait for that. And guess what? I still get a new one out every single month. So I am avidly reading comics. I know how the comic book I know how comic books work, I know that every single issue is going to be a little piece of the story, but the whole point I was making in the video, if you actually fucking watched it, was that because it's going to take another year, if not longer, to come out with the next one, I wish that there would have been more to the story. So stop trying to turn my review into this weapon against me, against Ethan, against other comic skaters, because it's not going to work. You need to do your fucking research. And it drives me so crazy how many people don't do their research. And yes, I know this was a very, you know, heavily uh, language, color, colorful language filled video, but it's something that was not bothering me. And then I was doing a stream that I usually do with my friends called The Jack Show. And, you know, Ethan said, oh, I'm sorry for everything that's been going on. And I was like, what do you mean? I wasn't paying attention to it. And then all of a sudden people start sending me all these things of all these people that are saying stuff, sending me screenshots on comments on other videos. Somebody even right, literally right after I came out with my review of the cyber frog, not even seven minutes later, there was a video out critiquing the way I critique that comic. You have a problem with the way I critique things? Don't fucking watch my videos. It's that simple. You don't like the way a professional artist critiques another artist? Then you're going to have a pretty hard life ahead of you. And that's something that I have, you know, learned in my critiques. You never kiss someone's ass. You never sugarcoat things. You'll be as blunt and honest as possible or else they are not going to learn. Ethan is getting a lot of, you know, heavy praised feedback, which he deserves. He put a lot of hard work into this. This was not easy to make. There are so many lines in every single one of these drawings. Every single page, every single panel is a work of art. Ethan spent, you know, so much time making this book. He's a very talented artist and he deserves all the praise in the world. But the critique I had for him was that I wished it was more, again, because it's not like regular comic, the regular comic book industry where you get a comic every month. You have to wait a year. I wish I had a little bit more. I understand why he did what he did. But my own personal feelings on it is that, and it's not, I would say this is both objective and subjective. I'm, you know, antsy and I want it, but also from, you know, a reader standpoint, if I was to present this to someone else, they would get frustrated. Like, if I were to go give this to a normie or someone in my family say, hey, read this comic, I, you know, I'm pretty sure they would like it. But as far as what I think would happen with people, you know, normies that are going to go buy this comic book, if you find out you have to wait a year for the next one, they're going to get frustrated. Of course, people that love Ethan, people that are fans of Ethan are going to wait a year or, and more, and more, and it's going to be another a year before you get the other one and the next one and the next one and the next one it's going to be years before we get the end of the story and i i just wish that there would be more i think that it would have been a better idea to add more to the story that being my biggest critique on the book is not a bad critique at all you, if you want to see bad critiques or you know me rip people apart, go watch the streams I do sometime that I have done on John Malin's channel where it's comic book presents. You want to go see me really dig in and critique people? Go watch that. You, If you are an aspiring artist, if you are an aspiring comic book artist or writer, you have to have thick skin. You have to understand that if you want to make it, you want to have, you know, successful art, successful writing, successful books, 
People are going to ask you every single question under the moon. People are going to dig into every single reason as to why you did this. Why did you draw this line this way? Why did you use this font? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? People are going to dig and dig and dig. And if you don't know all the answers, if you don't know how to take criticism, you're not going to make it in the industry. You're not going to, you're not, honestly, you're going to have a pretty hard life if you are that sensitive about every little tiny thing. But you know what? Ethan's been doing it for 26 years. He can take it. He can take a critique where it's somebody saying, hey, I want more. I want more of your book. That is not a bad critique. If I were to sit here and rip through, oh, well, you should have drawn this line this way. And oh, this looks like shit. Of course, it's not true because this looks amazing. But that's not the kind of critique I did if you actually watch the video. So everyone, I'm sorry if you had absolutely nothing to do with that. It's just something that's been really frustrating me now that I've been seeing it all. And people that want to get on my case about it, well, you know what? You want to say I'm not qualified? I 100% am qualified. You want to say I'm not a comic book fan? I am a comic book fan. And, you know, I mean, it, it's just... It's crazy. I know that there is this huge, you know, motif going on with... Comic Skate with Ethan. Ethan's got his crazy fans. All of, you know, the, the ones that do actually watch the streams and stay in touch with everything. They understand what the type of critique was and, you know, understand, you know, me, I guess, and, you know, the way that I do critique things. And they also understand that that would not be considered a bad critique. The fact that I want more of a comic, that I think that if you're going to, it's going to take years to come out with a comic, that you should have a little bit more to the story. And again, I understand why Ethan did what he did. But then there's the other people that just watch, and then all of a sudden they form, or they don't really watch, I should say, and they form their opinion on it instantly, and they want to go have a little hissy fit and post it everywhere. It's like, grow up, get a life, build a bridge, get the fuck over it, and do your research before you go and have a hissy fit online. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even if uh, you did not... Uh, know that this was going on. I understand that people do enjoy my rants. That's why I uh, did de decided to do this video because it was just something that was insanely frustrating to me. Again, this is a very good comic. And I, like I said in the initial video, one of the things that really bothered me growing up reading comics, I hated when you have the like coolest image on the front and inside, you know, the art was absolute shit. This art is absolutely amazing. Ethan is very talented. This is a very good comic book. It's a very high quality comic book as well, and I'm excited to get the Chromium one. And again, I don't think it's a bad thing that my biggest critique is that I wanted more. So, everyone, uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. And uh, until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your day, and may the force be with you, because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. What's up, everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and I have an Etsy store, so if you've ever wanted to own a print of my artwork, this is the place to go. As you can see, I have a lot of recognizable characters, from horror films, to heroes, to Star Wars characters. Some of the notable characters I have on here are Darth Vader, which I did a couple live streams painting, so you can own a print of this painting. I also have Luke Skywalker, the binary sunset version, one of my favorite scenes in the original New Hope movie. I have Darth Maul, which Ray Parks himself actually complimented me on Instagram. And then last but certainly not least, Ahsoka Tano. So if you want to own any of these prints, go right on over to my Etsy store. Again, that's the art of Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. What's up everyone? I have a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799817. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.